Welcome to San Bruno Library Presents Once Upon a Time, the library's story time on TV. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a really great lineup of fun stories. I'm going to be reading stories about superheroes today. So are you ready? Let's get started. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. Hi ho the Mario, we're glad you're here today. Good job. Okay, you ready? Our first story is called Mighty Max by Harriet Ziefert and pictures by Elliot Kreloff. Okay, Mighty Max. Maxwell. Max heard his daddy shouting, You're not Superman, so climb down and sit. You cannot be a bird without hurting yourself. Max sat, but not for long. Maxwell, you're not King Kong, so climb down from the rock pile before you fall and hit your head. Max sat, but not for long. Maxwell, you're not evil Knievel. So put your feet on the pedals before you lose control and crash into a tree. Vroom, vroom. I am not Superman or King Kong or evil Knievel. I am Mighty Max. And I can save the day, dun dun da. Max's daddy said, if you're so mighty, pick up the picnic basket and put it in the back of the car. We're going to the beach. When they got there, Max waited with the beach stuff while daddy drove off to park the car. Max climbed down the dune and put the picnic basket on the sand. Here I am to save the day, he shouted as he ran back up the hill for another load. As soon as Daddy found a spot, Max climbed onto his boogie board and rode the waves. I'm Mighty Max. Look at me. Dun, dun, dun. When a beach ball landed on his towel, Max grabbed it and threw it back into play. I saved the game. When a sand castle was wrecked by a wave, Max helped rebuild it. I saved the castle. At lunchtime, Max decided to have a picnic on top of a jetty. He climbed the rocks, then found what he thought would be a good spot. Max spread out his chips, his sandwich, and his juice. All of a sudden, a large gull swooped down and grabbed half of Max's sandwich. Another gull grabbed some chips. I'm Mighty Max. Stop stealing my lunch. Max thought, maybe if I find a different spot, the gulls will leave me alone. As he climbed a dune, he heard his dad yell, Maxwell. Max sat, but not for long. And that's the story of Mighty Max. So our next book is called Kapow. Do you have what it takes to be a superhero? Hmm. This looks like a job for Kapow, American Eagle by George O'Connor. Swoosh, zoom, 
Kapow! With one mighty blow, the wall tumbles like toy blocks. Help! Huh? Bug lady? Come quick, American Eagle! Trouble! Whoosh! There they are. No roughhousing, you guys. Someone might get hurt. Zoom! Whoosh! Hey, what did your mom say? <gasps> Great Scott! Look, a panther has escaped from the zoo! Meow! <coughs> Roar! comes the cage. Case closed, bug lady. I always say nothing like a little roughhousing to save the day. Good grief. This isn't why I needed your help. Huh? The rubber bandits robbing the First National Bank. Come on! Wahahaha. There's the rubber bandit. Prepare to be snapped, rubber bandit. Mom says no hitting. I'll show you no hitting. Come here. You're stretching my shirt. Suddenly, crash. Uh-oh. Oh, now you've done it. What are we going to do when your mom sees? Mom? Oh man, we're in for it now. Here she comes. Okay, nobody panic. Leave it to me. I'll think of something. Maybe she won't even notice. Doom, doom, doom. What happened? Is everyone all right? Uh, American Eagle looks out over the devastation. He knows what to do. We were just playing, and I know you said not to, but I was roughhousing, and I knocked over some stuff, and I'm really sorry. I'll make it up to you. I promise. Am I in trouble now? Hmm. One's in trouble, but I think you've learned your lesson. I'm just glad nobody was hurt. But since you're off, since you offered, there is a way you can make it up to me. And don't forget to pick up your jacket, superhero. And so the day is saved, thanks to American Eagle and his heroic companions, too, of course. Meanwhile, meow. <laughs> and that's kapow. Okay. One more for this part. This one is called Superfly Guy by Ted Arnold. So this time it's a fly that's a superhero. A boy had a pet fly. The fly was named Fly Guy. Fly Guy could say the boy's name buzz. Chapter one. One day, Fly Guy went to school with buzz. Fly Guy learned about reading and phonics. Does, fuzz, was. He learned about art. There he is. Then, it was lunchtime. Fly Guy loved the lunchroom. He loved the dirty dishes. He loved the smelly mop. He loved the garbage cans. Fly Guy met the lunch lady. Her name was Roz. No flies in the lunchroom, Roz said. Fly Guy said, Roz. This fly is smart, Roz said. He knows my name. She fed Fly Guy chicken bones and fish heads in sour milk. 
Fly Guy was so happy. Chapter 2. Roz's boss was not happy. The children cannot eat in a room full of flies, he said. You are fired. Roz was sad. Fly Guy was sad. Buzz and the children were sad because Roz was a good cook. The next day Roz was gone. Miss Muzzle was the new lunch lady. She made burnt peas and turnips. No one in the school ate lunch. Not even Fly Guy, who ate almost anything. Everyone missed Roz. <laughs> even the boss missed Roz. That night Buzz made a plan. Chapter three. The next day, Fly Guy went to school again. In the lunchroom, Fly, Fly Guy said, Ms. Muzz. Ms. Muzzle looked up. Fly Guy blinked her on the nose. Ms. Muzzle cried, No flies in my lunchroom. She grabbed her swatter and swung. She missed. She missed again. She missed again, she missed again, she missed again. Crash. The boss was not happy. The children cannot eat in this mess. You are fired. The next day, Roz was back. You are a super fly guy. Roz. Roz made a special garbage soup for super fly guy. Fly guy was happy. Everyone was happy. And that's the story of Superfly Guy. So hold on. We'll be right back after a break with some more superhero stories. I have some super baby stories for you after the break. cyclists, adults and children, should follow standard safety precautions. One of the first and best rules to remember is... Always wear a helmet! Never wear a hat under your bike helmet. The helmet should be worn level and cover your forehead. The straps should always be fastened. A head injury means a brain injury. If your helmet doesn't have a Consumer Product Safety Commission sticker, get one that does. Brought to you by San Bruno's Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee and San Bruno Cable. Wouldn't it be nice if a maid would clean up after us? I Think of it as the maid's day off. Please clean up after yourself. Keep San Bruno clean. Social Security Online is a lot easier than relearning the Watusi. It's not just for making friends, it's for saving lives. Brought to you by the San Bruno Bicycle and Pedestrian Safety Committee and San Bruno Cable TV. I'm Smith. And I'm Joe. And we're conducting an experiment to see if people like trash in their homes. Uh, yeah? Hello, sir. Please step back. What? what are you? Wait, hold on a second! Whoa! What? Uh, who are you guys? Aha! Judging from your reaction, it looks like you don't like trash in your home. No, of course not, but... Sir? This is yours. We saw you dump it out of your car on the freeway. Oh, see, I is was California just... your home, sir? Obviously. And you don't like trash in your home? No, of course then not. Then why would you trash California? Don't trash California.
bundle and save. Now you can get digital phone along with high-speed internet and cable TV from San Bruno Cable. Get all three and save a bundle. Call today. Welcome back. So our next book is called Super Dog, The Heart of a Hero by Carolyn Buhner and illustrated by Mark Buhner. Super Dog, Planet Protector. Dexter was a little dog. His legs were little, his tail was little, his body was little. He looked like a plump sausage sitting on four little meatballs. Being that si the size that he was, Dex was often overlooked. The other dogs grew tired of waiting for Dex to catch up when they played chase, and after a while they forgot to invite him at all. No one really seemed to notice him except when Clevis the tomcat demonstrated how he could stand right over Dex and not even ruffle his fur. Yes, everything about Dex was little except for his dreams. He wanted to be a hero. He could just see it. The mighty Dex flew up into the dark and starry night. But wanting and being are two different things. Dex lived on dreams until one day, after crawling out from under Clevis yet again, he decided there had to be more to life than gazing at the underside of a cat. There had to be more to him. If he could be a hero, he would. So Dex started training. He read every superhero comic book he could find. He watched every hero movie ever made. He went to the library. Furiously, he studied, knowing everything depended on him. Dex figured out that a hero must have strong muscles. He needed exercise and lots of it. Dex started trotting to the corner and back every morning. He hopped over every crack in the sidewalk. He struggled to climb the garbage pile up and over and down, then up and over and down again. All day long he worked day after day, even at bedtime when he wanted to flop on the rug with his tongue hanging out. Dex forced himself to circle five extra times. The mighty Dex pressed on through wind and rain and storm and fatigue. When it got easier to run to the corner and back, Dex did it again and then again. Then he dragged a sock filled with sand as he ran, then two socks. When Clevis was bored and stood in the middle of the sidewalk to block his way, Dex dropped to the ground and slid right under him. He was too busy to be bothered by Clevis. Dex was tired. He was sore. He was working so hard that he almost forgot what he was working for. But one night, as he dragged himself to bed after his last set of push-ups, Dex stopped in front of the mirror and flexed. He could feel them. He could see them. Muscles. Faster than a rolling ball, stronger than the toughest rawhide, able to leap tall fences in a single bound. Now, Dex didn't take the stairs. He skimmed them. He leaped over hydrants. He vaulted up curbs. He could climb over the garbage mountain without touching the top. He could run like the wind. He felt as if his legs had springs. Only one thing was missing. Finally, a small brown package arrived. Dex ripped it open. His hero suit! It was red with a shiny green cape, and it fit like a glove. Dex loved the way it felt. He loved the way it looked, and he loved the feeling he had when he put it on. He was ready. With the courage of a lion, the strength of a bear, and the heart of a hero. When Dex went out in his suit for the very first time, he looked up the street and down. He noticed a young pup trying to cross the street. Dex sprang into action. May I help you? He asked. He guided the wide-eyed pup across the street and grinned as the pup stared up at him with his mouth hanging open. The pup whispered, Wow, it's Super Dog. Super Dog. 
Dex liked the sound of that. Of course, when Clevis saw Dex, he just had to comment, Hey, Dex, where's the party? And when he saw him a few days later, Clevis called out, Look, everybody, it must be Halloween. Anybody got a treat for Dex? Dex was so busy that he was able to ignore Clevis for the most part. The only time his face even got red was when Clevis yelled, Where'd you get that dress up? Dex had to wonder if Clevis saw anything but the suit. Didn't he understand that the suit was just a way to let people know he was there to help? The sun glinted off his emerald cape as Superdog raced to the rescue. There was a mouse he saved from a sewer, a purse snatcher he tackled. He fixed his neighbor's sprinkler. He found a lost kitten, pulled a rat away from a live wire, tracked down a lost wallet, put out a trash fire, and organized a neighborhood cleanup day. It seemed that now, whenever anyone needed help, they turned to Dex, and Dex had never been happier. Late one evening, there was a banging at the door. When Dex answered, it seemed as if the whole neighborhood was yipping and yowling in panic. It's Clevis, they shouted. He's stuck in a tree. Hurry, Dex, hurry. Dex raised his eyebrows. It was not like Clevis to move enough to get into any trouble. In a flash, he was dressed and ready. It was clearly a desperate situation. As he got closer, Dex could see Clevis. He had been chasing a squirrel to the top of the tree but had slipped and was hanging by one claw from a slender branch. He was yowling for all he was worth. Oh no! I'm slipping! Clevis screeched, help me! Dex looked desperately around for something to climb on. There were no boxes or ladders, not even any trash cans. Then Dex looked at the crowd. Quick, everybody, Dex shouted. I've got an idea. Dex leaped onto the end of the teeter-totter facing the tree, pushing it to the ground. Everybody on the other end. One, two, three. All the animals jumped together on the other end of the teeter-totter, catapulting Dex into the air. He soared over the crowd, his ears and cape streaming out behind him. The mighty Dex flew up into the dark and starry night. Dex scrambled onto the branch next to Clevis. Quickly, he pulled off his cape and tied its four corners onto the screeching cat. Jump, Dex shouted. Jump, Clevis! With an ear-piercing shriek, Clevis let go. The bellowing cape caught the air and the parachuted the big cat to the ground. Dex backed up and slid to the ground amidst the cheers of the crowd. Super dog, super dog. Dex was bruised and tired, but he forgot his discomfort as Clevis sheepishly lumbered over, still tangled in the green cape. Thanks, Dex, you really are a superhero. Dex didn't think he could feel any better, but he did, just a little. The next day when Clevis sidled up next to him and whispered, Say, Dex, could I be your partner? Dex looked the big tomcat up and down. It would take a lot of work to turn Clevis into a hero. He could hardly wait. Sure, said Dex with a grin. Sure. With twice the brains and triple the brawn, our heroes forge on, ever ready to lend a helping paw. And that's the story of Superdog. Okay, now I'm really excited about sharing this book with you. This book is called Avocado Baby by John Burningham. So here's our super baby, the first one. Mr. and Mrs. Hargraves and their two children were not very strong. Mrs. Hargraves was expecting another baby and they all hoped it would not be as weak as they were. The new baby was born and all the family were very pleased. Mr. and Mrs. Hargraves brought the baby home and it grew. But as they feared, it did not grow strong. Mrs. Hargrave found feeding the baby very difficult. It did not like food or want to eat very much. Whatever can I do, wailed Mrs. Hargraves. 
the baby doesn't like eating anything I make and it looks so weak. Why don't you give it that avocado pear, said the children. In the fruit bowl on the table, there was an avocado pear. Nobody knew how it had got there because the Hargraves never bought avocados. Mrs. Hargraves cut the pear in half, mashed it up, and gave it to the baby who ate it all up. From that day on, an amazing thing happened. The baby became very strong. It was getting so strong, it could break out from the straps of its high chair, pull other children uphill in a cart, wrench off the sides of its cot, and each day Mrs. Hargraves gave the baby avocado pear. One night, a burglar got into the house. The baby woke up and heard the burglar moving about downstairs. The baby picked up a broom and chased the burglar. The burglar was so frightened at being chased by a baby that he dropped his bag and ran out of the house. The next day, Mr. Hargraves put a notice on the gate. That should keep the burglars away, he said. It says, beware of the baby. The baby would help carry the shopping, move the furniture, and push the car when it would not start. One day, two bullies were waiting for the children in the park. The bullies started being very nasty to the children. The baby did not like that and jumped out of its pushchair. picked up the bullies and threw them into the pond. The baby gets stronger every day and of course is still eating avocado pears. And that brings us to the end of this story time. I hope to see you at the library for story times. Bring your library card and you can check out some books. I'll talk to you soon. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Well, it's time to say goodbye. Give a wave and say goodbye. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Bye. So sit me down and let the spell begin. I'll find myself in story time again. Story time, story time, story time again. Story time, story time, story time again.